Hello everyone, hope you're doing okay. So I've got um, two for the price of one today. I have a couple who are um, lyricists and songwriters and I can't believe the catalogue of things that they've done. Honestly, incredible and I'm so lucky to be able to show you this interview with Dan and Laura Curtis. Take a listen. Awesome. So my first question for you is, where does your love of music come from? Oh, my, what's really great is my love of music is, on the one hand, natural. Uh, since I can remember, um, I have linked imagination and music really strongly. So music makes me think of things. But then I'm really lucky in that I've had lots of amazing teachers along the way who have introduced me to their influences and as a result of that I have developed a love for those things too like I'm a big Rodgers and Hammerstein fan that's that's my bag um but I do I also I'm quite um I'm quite into pushing it into a uh, very much more contemporary uh kind of themes as well um but uh, but the old stuff for me is always the best yeah love it and so do you have would you say that was your musical influence then that kind of music yeah and android weber um because i went to um a music school so from a young age i had pretty intensive um, music tuition and most of that was classical but Angela Wood Webber was you could get away with singing Angela Wood Webber you could sneak some of that rap in um, and so he, he was like I was always trying to sing a bit of Angela Wood Webber whenever possible so he's got a special place in my heart for that but yeah and Rogers and Hammerstein. Lovely and what are your instruments you know you're talking about singing there what have you got a vast amount of instruments that you can you can play or is it your voice what what are your instruments? I sing, I play piano and I play violin badly. <laughs> Jen, I, got, I got a grade seven and I don't know, I think someone was paying those examiners. I'm awful. I'm the most naturally awful person at the violin I've ever heard. I, um, I, I don't know what it is, but I have no tone. It just sounds scratchy and horrible no matter what I do to it. So, so yeah, technically I play the violin, but not well. <laughs> <laughs> so if anybody were to ask in like a concert you'd maybe bow out of the violin maybe you wouldn't you'd say yeah that. yeah I if, especially if there was one in the room I I wouldn't be owning it up to being able to go anywhere near it definitely and oh. I actually I actually thought that maybe um it was because uh it was really high so then I switched to the viola um as if as if uh, and I wasn't any better at the viola either uh just for the record so uh so yeah I, I steer away from the string instruments I love it yeah no I didn't it was never something I played I remember being young like six or seven no maybe seven or eight and they asked for people and I already had just taken up the clarinet and they were like oh well we can't really teach you two instruments because you're so young and um so that's how I managed to get out of the violin they, they kind of said no no but but my, I think my mother was absolutely oh so pleased that I didn't come home at seven with a violin <laughs> <laughs> yeah it you it is it's it's punishing the one the one not the one good thing the violin's an amazing instrument if you can get on with it and make a good sound um I suppose because of the nature of the instrument you have to get further up the grades to really produce a good sound whereas at the piano kind of you can play something simple it's going to sound quite nice but playing an orchestral instrument means you can play in an orchestra and I have some amazing friends in school as a result of being able to do that so I am very grateful for that side of it. And um, how did you start um, writing music how did that all come about? um I I when I was really young I used to write songs which we won't talk about <laughs> <laughs> and um, but I was naturally inclined to doing it and then um I did my GCSE I started two years early on my GCSE in school and there was a comp composition module for that and I found um I really enjoyed writing um I didn't know it was musical theatre at the time it was just what came naturally it was just put, you know you get the influences going in and you put out kind of what goes in um so I wrote I wrote a song for Elijah Woods aka Frodo Baggins from Lord of the Rings called the one with stars in his eyes and it is proper cringe um but um there's a song 
Dan and I wrote called Why Am I Falling? And as a little bit of an internal joke, um, I used one of the melodic motifs and put it into Why Am I Falling from when I was, I think, 14 um, and writing that song. So there's a little there's a little throwback there. Um, Yes, it was my first piece was written for Elijah Woods. I had a Frodo bag and things when I was, uh, I don't know, 13 or 14, which is a bit embarrassing. But there we go. Love it. Why not? That was that was the influence for the song. That was the influence. <laughs> Love it. And how did it? Um, how did your skills develop from there? Then where did where did you go from? Like GCSE music. How did you get to where you are now? Oh, I'm really unconventional. Um, I went through. I did my A level music, and then I just wanted to try something different. And I think maybe it's because I was involved in music from the age of nine so so intensively. Um, and I'd always been interested in media and journalism. And so I went and did a journalism degree of, of all things because um, I'd made short films as well. Um, while I was in school, I won this BBC competition um, and had something on BBC Two. Um, so it was it was two things which I was really passionate about and I felt I'd so far neglected one. So, yeah, I did the journalism degree. I really enjoyed it um, learned loads of interesting stuff and then hop back to music afterwards. Um, and I don't regret any of it because I learned so many skills um, that are necessary for music, like being able to do graphics and press releases and, and write copy are, are all really useful things um, for a musician and a composer. So, so yeah, it was great. Amazing. And um I, I know you obviously collaborate with with Dan. Is he the best person you've ever collaborated with? He's the only person I've ever collaborated with. So so I have to I have to answer yes. Although obviously it would have been yes anyway. Um, but I together we have collaborated with a third third parties as well. So for example, Ramin Karam Lu co-wrote some co-wrote lyrics on Why Am I Falling? Um, and we've worked with other composers as well. Um, and there is just loads local um ones further afield. Um, but but yeah um, in terms of two um I've only ever worked with Dan. Wow. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. Yeah. It's like a bit of exclusivity um it's just the way it's just the way it worked out and really we started the writing journey together and and uh, and continue to travel down that road together that's amazing and how quickly do you um write a piece now that is um there is no blanket answer for that what i can break down is the the little individual processes so um getting the hook and the meat of the song um normally happens quite quickly um because um Dan, Dan normally does this bit sometimes I do he'll he'll get the starting point and it doesn't normally take him long what takes longer is moving on from that so developing that trying it out um getting the structure of the song in place and then the bit which always takes the longest is lyrics um li- lyrics there's there's I think there's always composer lyricists or lyricist composers. We are both definitely composers first, then lyricists. So that that is more challenging for us. And it does take us longer, um, normally a couple of days, sometimes a couple of hours if we're if the wind's blowing in the right direction, but normally a little longer. And um, do you have favourite people that you have you ever written songs for particular people or you have? Yeah, yeah, we. Um, in um, our album, probably best to talk about Overture, um, we literally wrote the songs from scratch, knowing who was going to sing them. Okay. So, for example, um, I'll use Bryce Pinkham, who's an amazing, amazing artist. He was on Broadway um, doing Gentleman's Guide to Love and Murder. He's Tony nominated. So when he came on board to do the album, uh, we got talking to him and he explained how interested he was in Joseph Grimaldi, who is a Regency era clown. And um, we researched um, Grimaldi's life and wrote Grimaldi's soliloquy for Bryce. And funny enough, as a result of that, we actually ended up writing a full musical concept um, and Bryce came back and, and recorded it 
um, the whole thing, which was amazing. But that's just one example where writing for one individual um, sparks um, even more creativity later down the line. Yeah. And have you had a favourite voice or person that you've uh, written for? I'm going to give two answers. Um, Natalie Weiss was amazing and can just do anything. So on that level, being able to write a song and there being pretty much no limits was fantastic. Yeah. On a personal basis, Leia Salonga was somebody who I had been aware of since I was a child. And I actually, um, I didn't grow up like a lot of people do now, being a musical theatre fan and knowing about the different artists, but I did know about her. So to work with her was absolutely fantastic because I'm a big Disney fan. Yeah, oh my God, her voice is insane. Beautiful and really, really, really lovely. Yeah. She, she she shared her lunch on that day, which was sushi. And uh, and I could tell uh, Dan was definitely um, a bit overwhelmed because he ate it and he hates sushi. So <laughs> <laughs> that's brilliant. And do you have uh, what are your proudest moments in your career? Oh, um, just seeing work performed as a general statement feels like such an honour and it's it's something that never ever loses its magic so any time that I just sit there and somebody or even a group of people perform music that you've written really really moves me so I don't really care very much what the venue is or how many people are there it just is equally as special every time um, and that that is my honest answer on that um the i've got this thing i suppose about performing and, and sharing um arts which is you can definitely work towards being on the west end that is obviously the what most people to con consider to be the pinnacle of their career but never forget that they are just an audience there might be four people in that audience who came down from sheffield and next week, they could be in a local theatre in the audience and you could be performing in a regional theatre and it really doesn't matter. You're performing for them and entertaining them. The audience is always the same. It doesn't matter how prestigious the venue is. Just make sure you're giving your best performance and all that. That's all that matters. And it's the same thing for hearing music. It doesn't matter where it is. It, it just matters that, that we're hearing it and that's wonderful and that we're doing that for an audience. That's an amazing answer. I love that. That was good. That was a great answer. I think, I, people, <laughs> I think people, you know, like you say, people tend to pinpoint moments. People tend to pinpoint. But yeah, as like you say, you know, hearing your music anywhere must be just amazing. It is. It genuinely is. Uh, and um, I would really encourage people to to write as well. Um, it's it's takes a bit of practice as you would imagine but it's an amazing outlet and it is really fantastic to get your own voice heard especially if you think about the music you like and maybe once you've consumed it all once you've heard all the all the soundtracks and watched all the shows think about what, what would you like to see and and when Dan and I write a lot of the time we're just going well, what would I like to hear what 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 do I want to hear uh, a Western artist belt out on a stage and, and it really stems from that. And um, what are your other hobbies? So when you're not doing what you're doing, what do you like to do? <laughs> oh no. Um, my, my, I, a very strange person, you must understand. I really am interested in the weather <laughs> and um, I love um, like watching extreme weather and now with the rise of streaming and things like that you can watch things like tornado chasers live and I love it so that's that's probably my my kooky kooky interest um I'm always trying to plan a Disney holiday wherever possible that's definitely going to get classed as a hobby because anyone who's a diehard Disney fan knows it takes so much planning it's like having a a, a third job um anything else anything else vaguely interesting french <laughs> french okay and i've been trying to learn french uh with with medium success um i i went to paris um 
twice over last year and lots of French people did laugh in my face but they did say they admired me for trying so there we go that's fine. <laughs> hey last question for you is um, after lockdown what is next for you where where are you going what are you doing um, is there anything planned? Ah well yes is the answer <laughs> I should have just gone no, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> nothing. Um, we have been working uh, towards a mental health um, big project. Um, I don't know if you've seen, we've done things like The Hero before and projects for Tea Haven where we get lots of people together to do um, big charity songs. Well, we're doing something for World Mental Health Day um, and it's going to be really lovely. Uh, we've recorded the vocals on it already um, and we've got a few amazing celebrities who've also sent us their contributions I can't say anything at the moment and I'm I'm working on it I'm I'm editing it at the moment and and yeah we're very excited about it oh amazing oh that's fantastic amazing thank you no right do you want me to go and get the other half yes please yeah, it was I, lovely to talk to you thank you so much to you too i'll go get him now and uh, like i said hopefully we'll, we'll, he'll probably announce the project i had haven't even been told we're doing yet <laughs> amazing right my first question for you is where does your love of music come from well when i was little um i used to spend kind of most of my Sundays at my grandparents' house. Um, and from literally a couple of years old, um, I would go there and start putting on their records. Uh, my grandmother was a huge fan of uh, the uh, kind of Italian-American tenor Mario Lanza. Um, and through him and his vast uh, kind of uh, amount of records that he recorded and films, I got to to hear the kind of greatest songs ever made, really, those those standards written predominantly between kind of 1910 and about, you know, 1950s, 1960s. Um, and those songs really were the ones that I grew up with. And on the other side of my family um, were kind of huge Frank Sinatra fans. So I was kind of being played records, um, you know, very, very uh, different records to what, was going on in school. So I, I pretended for a while to, to put headphones in and, and listen to, pretending I was listening to, you know, Prodigy or something, but I, I was really listening to, uh, you know, the great singers of all time. And, you know, I, it didn't make me the coolest kid in school, I'll be, I'll be honest with you. But my, my love of music very much came from uh, my grandparents, yeah, without a doubt, without a doubt. Amazing. And I think that's the thing. It, all of those different genres and, and influences really um, help shape the kind of not just the person you are, but the writer that you are as well. And Definitely. Definitely. The very, very lucky to have um, you think of like George Gershwin and Irvin Berlin and Cole Porter, uh, Richard Rogers. But then on the other side of things, um, you know, we we both adore Alan Menken. Um, you know, Alan is the man. Um, he's unbelievable. And John Williams as well. You know, and, and when you really kind of look at John Williams and, and Alan Menken and, you know, they loved Gershwin and Porter and Berlin and so on. And I, actually, it, it's just and the Sherman brothers in the middle there. And you kind of see this this beautiful thread of music that that kind of everybody kind of got inspired by each other and. You know, someone has to take on um, and be inspired by what Alan does and, and, and so on. And, and the chain goes forward and forward. But, yeah, we um, we love those guys. They're amazing. Absolutely amazing. That's a really good way to look at it and a really good way to put it. That, yeah, you're all influencing one another. And, and what you can take from somebody else's music, they might take something from yours. And, and it's yeah. that beautiful gift of that, isn't it? You know, music's like that. You know, it's. There are only so many notes on a piano or a guitar or what, whatever. Um, you know, it's the way that you interpret those notes. The chances of you today sitting down and writing something that is completely original without it being very, very atonal or something isn't really next to zero. Um, but, you know, what you obviously can do, people have their own sounds, you generally know if an Alan Menken ballad comes on or you hear a song and you go, well, that's very Alan Menken. Um, 
or that's very George Gershwin, or that's very Richard Rogers. Um, and I don't think there's anything wrong with that at all. You know, I, I, it's a tribute to them in many ways. Um, I think when we write, we try to write with a amalgamation of all of those wonderful people uh, and the Beatles and, and all of these other influences and Elvis. And, you know, you, you just recall those influences, whoever they might be on you. And, you know, I think that's what great music is. It's a reinterpretation of something, um, whatever it may be and whatever's personal to you. Yeah. Definitely. And how um, how did you start writing music? Where did where did it start and how did you get to where you are now? Well, I think I always kind of loved singing and I always liked uh, writing lyrics, but I couldn't play the piano for years and years and years. It was always a real kind of regret in mind. So I, I tried to write with a lot of people where I would kind of try to sing them melodies. Um, and I think when I first started doing that, I, I never quite realised how many... Uh, by sitting at the piano, how many variations of chords that you could put with a melody. Um, and, you know, I, I would sing something and I would expect it to sound exactly like it was in my head. Um, and it never happened. You know, it never came out exactly the way I had it in my head. Um, not to say that the people I was working with didn't do a good job. It was just yeah. it wasn't what was in my head. Um, Maybe. And, you know, you start thinking these great arrangements and, you know, trying to get that across. So really, until I really learned how to play the piano um, and that opened this this world of for me where, you know, finally I, I could kind of color um, what was in my mind, you know, and and put that on the piano and, and color those, you know, those kind of blank bits which were just not coming out and the wonderful thing about working with Laura is you know we bounce off each other you know um I tend to start something write something down pass it over to her she works on it we come back together look at some lyrics um there are sometimes those occasional moments where a song and lyrics all come out at the same time you just never quite know what you're gonna get but you know it works really well for us both to, to write together and it's like having a great editor as well in, in both you know you know you write something and you kind of edit it and go yeah this is really nice but we always think if we write for each other and if we like it that's at least it was you know worth doing you know so yeah. that's the way I, we try to write. I guess as well like you trust one another and, and that's a big thing within you know the arts in general isn't it you know you're putting your trust in each other to um you know either say yeah that was a really good idea or take credit for something or say actually let's amicably like put that to one side because that's just not working and you know you have to have that honesty otherwise it doesn't work does it no definitely and i think one of the the greatest things about writing is you always believe your last song is your best okay so that that is something a hundred percent the last song you wrote the best song you've ever done um, and actually, you know, it, quite often it, it is probably not. You, know, you can only have one of those, the best song you've ever done. And it's open for interpretation as well. Um, you can have a favourite songs that you've written or favourite songs that people have recorded. But actually, you do need to step away sometimes, um, you know, not become really kind of overly personal. It, it shocks me, you know, some of the greatest songs ever written um we're actually cut from stuff. I mean, you look at Alan Menken's Proud of Your Boy, brilliant, you know, a beautiful, beautiful song. Um, the beautiful Briony C, cut from Mary Poppins, put into bed knobs and broomsticks, but basically was dumped in the closet to never be heard of again. Um, and you just think of how great, you know, that's just two examples of two songs. Um, so you can't be really precious about songs, I think, you know, and music in general, because... Yeah, you know, it's you just try and find them a home somewhere, somewhere along the line. Yeah. And I, I asked Laura this question. Do you have a favourite person that you've ever written for? Uh, it's really difficult. I mean, some of the people who've contributed to our work without singing it, you know, people like uh, Paul McCartney speaking and so on. That was kind of mind blowing for me to have you know, a, a real hero kind of idol of mine, you know, to appear. And, and that was probably the, the moment that I kind of, you know, it was one of the very few things I ever wanted to achieve was have Paul McCartney in some way, you know, on a song. Um, I have loved working with so many people. Leia Salonga was amazing. You know, she's impeccable. 
Um, and, uh, you know, that voice that from my childhood was, you know, embedded with Princess Jasmine and especially Princess Jasmine. Um, but, uh, you know, it's, it's really incredible and, and profound, you know, to work with these people. But there have been many others. There's a country artist called Mark Brassard, and he was phenomenal because it was such a different sound. Um, and he you know, has a real recording voice. And, and doing that really opened up uh, what we're doing now, which is working in Nashville a lot more. So there are sometimes these these massive moments where you, you work with something and it opens up a different kind of path. But we're very, very lucky. We, we've worked with pretty, you know, most of the people theatrically, you know, who work predominantly in the Broadway and West End, who we'd like to work with. Of course, there are others. But, yeah, we've been very lucky to kind of work with the very, very best which is which is amazing amazing and do you have any proudest moments or career highlights for you i think taking a piano down a coal mine that was right up there so in um you know, back in uh, 2012 we um, were the first people to ever take a piano down big pit in blind avon uh, to perform a concert for fallen miners which led into a big charity single that we did called a miners song which kind of kick-started a, a chain reaction really of of what we kind of do a lot of now which are kind of big charity projects but to actually take a piano down a mine and sing down a mine and perform songs down a mine uh, and all of what that kind of stood for and the reasons that was amazing and to have bbc breakfast bbc one show itv news bbc news was very very surreal um you know it's always lovely when these songs come out quite often they're so long in the making um that it kind of gets diluted a bit by the time it gets released you know you've been working on it for months and months and months but that mine really happened in in a space of like an hour where a piano turned up we did a concert an hour later, it was out of the mine on its way back. You know, the cameras were gone and it, it was very surreal and something I will I will never forget. I, I'd be surprised if anything could ever top it. It was unbelievable. Yeah, unbelievable. Amazing. And um, do you have any hobbies when you're not um, doing what you do? What are your hobbies? Yeah, mainly sport based. So uh, triathlons, running, biking, swimming. Uh, some stuff in the gym, mainly, uh, you know, sports kind of related. Uh, and music in general, I just like listening to music and, and kind of listening to it and seeing what's out there. But, yeah, it normally falls into sports for me. I'm uh, doing something sporty somewhere. Yeah, definitely. You're always on the go. Yeah, I never try to stop. Even when I'm in the gym, I, you'll often find me uh, reading a book or something. You know? So, you know, you try and multitask it out. I was studying for something and literally, you know, I was on the bike or whatever and I'm reading, a, you know, a, a book, um, a revision book. So, yeah, multitasking is great. You know, let's get it done the best you can do, isn't it? But, yeah, it's <laughs> love it and um, my last question for you is what's next after lockdown what do you plan on doing um is there anything that you're quite you're looking forward to or that you're planning in your head i really want to get this done well, maybe hopefully another you know, concert um and we're always working on a couple we're trying to look at something at the moment to do a children's uh, children's story with music so that's something um i think you know become quite uh, important once this this lockdown's over to pitch but uh, we've got an idea and we've got some songs so yeah we'll look at look at that when everything's back in full swing there somewhere amazing oh well i know for definite if you'd be up for doing something with my kids we'd love <laughs> that anytime amazing. you know it's always a pleasure you know um the great thing about theater and about music is people often forget kind of why they go into it um you know actually what you do and and the kids that they that obviously you, you have are the kind of rawest the most purest form of uh, of it all because i notice sometimes maybe some parents have gone you know let's let send you but but there are so many who really are there because they just love it and i think one thing majorly that this lockdown has done is a, a lot of artists who've maybe I don't know. I think with anything you do, sometimes I, I think you can take it for granted. And I think I've seen a lot of messages from a lot of people going, you know, I really want to get back to this. So I actually think whenever things do reopen, 
you're all going to see this this incredible standard and this great passion that people because they haven't been able to do it um, and i think that'll go right back down to you know to the little guys as well you know just they're just going to be so excited to be back in the room doing stuff that i i think it'll it'll you know add something something a little bit different maybe but I yeah it's, so uh, right. it's gonna be fun it'll be interesting to see what people have created i'd be shocked if there were not new musicals and you know new shows but they might be more in, you know unconventional you know maybe uh, i was saying to someone earlier street theater or you know pop-up theaters you know where uh suddenly you, you know you, you end up putting a, a theater in a dis, disowned shop in the middle of tembe yeah. you know um which is actually an idea we've always wanted to do but um to kind of you know there are all these old shops aren't there you know which no one uses and how cool would it be just to and you know to actually just go around and and just take over a shop for yeah, a day amazing. And put something in you know that sounds like a fun idea to do and i, I hope there are more things like that, that happen. yeah you know? definitely yeah people using their experiences throughout this time to create something is is wonderful <laughs> But unfortunately, so many people really are just they're feeling so down and so bad that they're just struggling to, to, to actually be able to do anything. But I'm sure those, you know, those prolific people. I mean, I know that the world hasn't changed for Alan Menken. He's just as busy as normal writing about 15 shows. You know, Andrew Lloyd Webber's working on Cinderella. Um, I'm sure Lin-Manuel Miranda's written two or three musicals in the lockdown, you know. Um so those guys are always fine, you know, because they just lock themselves in a room anyway. And, yeah. you know, John, John Williams will be scoring some film. So, you yeah. know, stuff's going on. It's um, it, it's it's just that, yeah, you know, you, you've got to somehow be say I'm going to do something. And it, and it can be really difficult because everybody's doing something. And it's like even the stuff's getting diluted now. You can see it on Facebook and, you know, whereas like someone puts up an amazing video a day later, there's another amazing video and another amazing video. But um, no, I'm sure there'll be some more exciting shows. I'm, I'm sure, certain there will be when this uh, is all over. I think so too. And say hello to all of your guys for us, won't you? And will do. You know, wish them all the best. And, um, you. you know, I, I, I'm sure it won't be too long before we can do something all together again in the future, you know, but... That would be amazing. Like I say, yeah, they'd love it. Um, I'm not, I don't write music. I'm not, um, I write the kids' shows, so I always write and direct the shows. So awesome. from a, a play point of view, I'm I'm pretty good with that. But yeah, with music and stuff, it's never been my bag. So it'd be amazing to marry the two together for something. That would be awesome. Absolutely. There's always, a, there's always scope to do something. So yeah, stay in touch. Say hello to everybody. Um, wish them well. And uh, mostly stay, uh, do you know what? I keep saying this. For some reason, I keep going, stay safe, but it's, it's <laughs> stay safe. safe. There we go. That's about the first <laughs> time I've stumbled over in the last couple of days. But uh, yeah, have a have a good one anyway. You take yeah, care. you too. And thank you so much to you and Laura for taking the time to do it. Really appreciate it. No, it's fine. No problem. Amazing. At all. Thanks so much. Take See care. You soon. Take care. Thank you. Bye. All the best. Bye bye. You bye. too. Yeah. Bye bye. bye. Thank you so much to Dan and Laura. A fantastic chat and so great to hear about all the fantastic things that they've been up to. Amazing. As always, lots more guests still to come. Take care, everyone. See you soon. <laughs>